Shalom, 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 Yisrael, Yasharala, Yisrael. This is Brother J. Yisrael coming to you again on this beautiful Sabbath day, giving all honor, glory, and praise to the Almighty Yah, Almighty Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. We thank you, we love you, we praise you, Father. In this day, in these times, Father, we ask for your strength. We're praying, fellowshipping, waiting patiently for you, although it's hard at times, and it may get harder. Father, please give us the strength to have patience and long-suffering, to have the endurance and the peace that only you can bring, because this world is not going to bring any peace, only chaos only chaos. The title of this study, this lesson today is Be Not Jealous or Envious. For the love of the Most High Yah is for all of us. We are commanded to love our brothers and sisters. That is a commandment, not a suggestion. When asked by the disciples, Hamashiach said, they asked him what was the greatest commandment. Hamashiach said, to love Yahweh with all your heart, to love the Most High Yah with all your heart and soul, to have no other gods before him besides him, and to love your brother and sister and treat them as you would yourself. Those were the two most important commandments. So if we follow those two, then we got a good chance of following everything else. If you're not following those two, then you're not going to follow the other ones. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Because Abba Yah knows that we need it. And then we can start getting into it. Most High Yah, thank you for bringing us together in spirit and truth today. In fellowship and worship. Whether we see this today or those who may see this on another day, Father. I ask that this message glorifies and edifies you that it increases you and decreases me, that it's not about me, it's not about us, it's about glorifying your name, Father. Bringing others to you, Father, if that's possible. Glorifying the kingdom, and the goal should be getting to the kingdom and doing your will, loving each other, Father. Not these things of the world. We know that we are in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. Ah, but we thank you for the breath of life. For everything that you got us through. Because if we sit and think about it, from our creation to wherever we are now, you brought us through so many things. So many things. And we could never repay you. Ah, but we know that we are sinners and we ask your forgiveness. We beg your forgiveness, Father. Not only for ourselves, but our loved ones. Our Yasharala nation, Father. All the Israelites, Father. We pray forgiveness for even those who are not Israelites, who are Gentiles, but who are brothers and sisters in Hamashiach. We thank you for everything that you do, everything that you will do, Father. We're praying over those who are sick, over those who don't have homes, who are in financial trouble, who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those in abusive and bad situations. We're praying for all the children that don't have fathers, don't have mothers, don't have guidance, Father. 
that you step in, Father, that you allow others to step in, that you touch others' hearts. We're praying for the widows, for the fatherless, for all those battling anxiety, battling fears, which we know is just things that Satan is putting on them. Father, we ask that you strip Satan of his power, that you take away his power on those spirits, on those bodies, on those souls, Father. And that it is replaced with your peace, your mercy, and your love, Father. We thank you. We love you. Hallelujah. So, today we thinking about our brothers and sisters. We thinking about the kingdom. That's the message for today. We thinking about how the Most High Yah is so gracious and merciful. So we're going to start in Luke, the 15th chapter, the first through the We're going to start in Luke, the 15th chapter, and we're going to start at Let's start at the first chapter, the first verse, I'm sorry. Luke 15 and 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Yahawashai told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does, not, does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. I'll repeat that, 15 and 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And we're going to pair that with another scripture. And then we're going to come right back to Luke. We're going to pair that with Ezekiel 18 and 23. We just drawing a comparison to let you know how the father feels about bringing souls to him, repentance, and that sort of thing. 18 and 23. Do I take any pleasure? This is your how we're talking. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Declares the sovereign Yah. Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live? So the Most High Yah don't take no pleasure in just killing or sending a wicked person to hell. He much rather you repent and do right things, do righteousness, than do wickedness. And we're supposed to have that same mentality towards our brothers and sisters. So when you hear brothers and sisters casting people to hell and 
saying things like, I got it and I'm on my way and I'm, you know, with the most high and you not and kind of mocking somebody or teasing or they're not really trying to pull their brothers and sisters up and bring them to the most high. Yeah. They not trying to teach them about Yahushua Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. They not trying to teach about the Messiah. They not having um, compassion for those who don't know things. They not having love in their heart. Then they not following the ways of Hamashiach, of the Messiah, of Yahweh Shai. And Hamashiach is the son. The Messiah is the son. Almighty Yah is the father. The son was doing the ways of the father. So the Messiah didn't come and mistreat people. He wasn't judging people. He wasn't looking down on anybody. So how can you do it? No master, what do you how should I say? No master is greater than his teacher. I mean, no teacher is greater, no uh student is greater than his master, excuse me. So the master is greater. The master is always greater. So you cannot do what you want to do. We supposed to be following Christ. Or the Messiah, the anointed one. We supposed to be following Hamashiach. We not supposed to be doing our own thing. You can't be greater than the master. And Hamashiach said, I'm not greater than the father. The father is the master. We supposed to follow his ways. So if he has a humble heart, if he shows mercy, then how much more do we need to try to show mercy? Because we're nothing but sinners. So he telling you in Ezekiel 18 and 23, he says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live? He's not just saying live in the physical. He's saying live and have eternal life. He rather somebody, and we just talked about it in Luke, going back to Luke. When Yahweh Shai gave the parable of the lost sheep, he says, I tell you, in that same way, 15 and 7, Luke 15 and 7, in that same way, they will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner than over 99 righteous who don't need to repent. And I know a lot of people will say, well, why would that be? Why would you rejoice over somebody that was doing wrong that stopped versus people that been doing the right thing and been following? Well, it leads us right here. This is part of the teaching, learning how the Father looks at things, learning how the Most High Yah looks at things. Yahweh Shai came to be a teacher. He came to die for our sins and to teach, to show the ways, to be the light. So Luke 15 and 11, he gives us the parable of the lost son. Yahweh Shai continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and then squandered his wealth in wild living. So he, he basically partied, kicked it, gambled, whatever he did, and lost his money. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. 
So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country who set him. He went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs, which we know that's unclean anyway. He longed to fill his stomach with the pies that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. So he was working. He hired himself out to work to make some money so he could eat and live. But then he came to his senses after a while and said, well, I can just go back to my father because my father has, he has money. He has stuff. And he even has hired men. And I can just let him know that I've sinned against heaven by being disobedient, by living this wild ways, and I sinned against you. And he said he would say to him, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he said, basically, just treat me like one of your servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So his father was compassionate. His father was happy. His father ran up to him and kissed his son. He told his servants, put, a be put the best robe on him. Put a ring on him. Put some sandals on his feet. Basically, bring him back to life. Put some, you know, make him feel good. Dress him up. Clean him up. Bring the fattened calf. We finna have a feast. This is a celebration. He says, Luke 15 and 24. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slain, slaving, excuse me, for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you killed the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So through that teaching, Hamashiach shows us what the father feels and thinks about a lost soul. 
That's the parable. The son was the lost soul, the younger son. He came back to him. He came back to righteousness. He turned away from his wild living and wicked ways. That's a celebration. The heavens rejoice for that. The father rejoices for that. He wants all of us. He's a gracious, merciful, loving God, a loving Elohim. He wants all of us to have salvation. That's why he sent his son. He wants all a Yasharal to have salvation. Yahweh Shai was sent for the Israelites, for Yasharal, Yasharala, for our nation. But not only just for us, for anybody who will believe in him and love him and do his ways. Do the Father's will. But he was primarily sent for us. We the first component. Everybody else is secondary, but that does not mean that just because you are Israelite, you're going to see the kingdom because you have to have love, compassion, righteousness in your heart. You have to call on the Father, believe in the Father, worship the Father and the Son. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Some say Yahusha being the Messiah and Yahweh being the Father. Almighty Yah, we have to worship the Father. We have to be faithful and do his will. You're not getting in, and this is not my words. This is the words of the Father. This is the words of the great teacher, the son of man, Hamashiach. You're not just getting in just because you say you call his name and you don't do no works and no wills and you don't have his love in his heart. You're not just getting in just because you read the Bible. And you're not getting in with hatred in your heart. Let's go to the scriptures. You got to go to the scriptures. I don't like to do a lot of talking and be speaking from my own mind. Because many people be talking out the delusions of their own mind and not going to the scriptures. But before we go, let's touch on the older brother in the parable of the lost son. The older brother, he was unhappy. He was jealous because he felt like he wasn't getting his just due. He felt like, well, why are you celebrating somebody who did wrong and now they want to come back? And that's an emotion that many of us would probably have. In that situation, like, hey, here I am. I've been doing my job. I've been faithful. I've been loyal. I've been righteous. And then now you want to, you're going to just accept him. And then you're going to make a big deal about it. But that's envy. That's jealousy. That's wickedness. You have to celebrate your brothers and sisters coming into Hamashiach coming into Yah, when the Ruach come over them, when they turn away from their wicked ways, we supposed to be praying for that. We ain't supposed to be casting people away, laughing at people, happy, talking about we know who going to heaven and we going and they not. We don't know nothing. Because the Most High Yah knows every measure of your heart, everything you think, everything you do before you going to do it. He knows the inner workings of you. So if you ain't right and sad, you can play like the Pharisees, Sadducees, the elders of the law and the teachers, but you can't fool the Most High. And the father in the story of the parable of the lost son is Yahweh. 
and he's rejoicing any time that we come to him and we do the right thing. Now, let's look at getting into heaven. Because a lot of people say, just because they say one thing or just because they're Israelite, they think they're getting into heaven. But that's not what scripture says. We're going to go to Luke 16, 19 to 31. This is the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm. A great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So it's a divide. Can't nobody get from heaven to hell and hell to heaven. He answered, this is the rich man, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Now, this is Abraham. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Excuse me. Now, that's also a prophecy or talking about a future, the future prophecy of Yahweh Shai rising from the dead to where it said they might not, they won't even believe even if somebody rise from the dead, they still won't believe, which many of our people and many people in general still didn't believe. Even when Hamashiach rose from the dead, he told them I was going to rise. They go to the tomb. He not there. He did all type of miracles. Many still didn't believe. They still didn't want to accept that he was the son of Yah. That he came down to die for our sins. So... Sometimes, some people, you're not going to be able to convince anything. And you don't sit up and just keep on trying to convince them. You let them know. And long as you did your job, what the Ruach, what the Father put on you through the Holy Spirit to do and say something and live your life in a certain way where they can see the Most High's light shine through you, that's all you could do. But in the parable, the rich man, or in this teaching, the rich man, 
he had his stuff in life. He lived the worldly life. He had everything he wanted. Lazarus had nothing. Lazarus was in the kingdom. He was not. Because what did the Most High say? What did Yahweh Shai say? The greatest will be the least, and the least will be the greatest in the kingdom. Give me one second. I want to go to the teaching. Hallelujah. Matthew 18. This is when the disciples was asking Hamashiach who will be the greatest in the kingdom. And they kind of was arguing with each other and talking with each other about who will be the greatest. Matthew 18. At that time, the disciples came to Yahweh and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it will be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. <clears throat> so when the brothers and sisters are teaching, when they say they are teaching and you don't see compassion, you don't see humility, It's not right. If the one who came to show us the way, the Messiah, the anointed one, Yahweh, Yahusha, if he came to show us the way and he was humble, very humble, he wanted to serve. All he did was heal and help. When did he lose his temper? He lost his temper in the temple and flipped over some tables and kicked some people out. Other than that, he was patient. He came to suffer for us. So how you gonna be boastful? How you gonna be prideful? How do you know everything? How are you saying that the father is only dealing with you and your group, your church? How? How can you say that? How are you going to speak for the father and, and tell who the father dealing with? In the whole world, the father don't deal with nobody but you. Blasphemy. That's not... That's not following the teaching. Hamashiach said he called a child. Do the brothers and sisters who do with this teaching, do they even give any honor to the children? Some do, some don't. We supposed to love the children, the fatherless, the women. Our brothers and sisters, not just the brothers. Not just the people we know. What does the scripture say? Even a wicked person love their friends and family. Anybody can love just the people that they cool with. That's not hard. He said, therefore, whoever humbles himself like a child is greatest in the kingdom. Because a child that hasn't been corrupted they don't have no ego. A child just want to be loved and want to give out love. 
They innocent. And don't do nothing to these children or to anybody, but especially no child and cause them to sin. Hamashi, I said, it'd be better if you had a large millstone around your neck and was drowned through the depths of the sea. It would be better. That would be a better outcome for what's waiting on you. In hell, in the afterlife. Where you gonna be sent. It'll be a better that would be a better outcome for you to be tortured like that than what's waiting on you. You have to study for yourself. And although you can look at a few things, it's best to study the word. Just study the word. Because many people are talking. for their own ego, for their own delusions of their mind. Some of the same ways the Pharisees and Sadducees was talking. They got it. They got it already. They already in heaven, almost, by the way they talking. They know they made it already. You don't know that. That's only the most high decision. He choose. You don't hear a worry, a concern. You don't hear a mourning of the things that's to come. When they talk about, oh, the earth going to be destroyed and only the 144. Does the father say only the 144 people, 144,000 people are going to heaven? No. Yes, it talks about the 144,000 doing a specific thing coming with the uh with Yahweh Shai, with the Messiah. And taking vengeance. Being killed, but being rising again. Yes, it talks about that. But that's not to speak that everybody else is going to be destroyed from here on out, except for 144,000 people. That's the only that's the only people that got a chance of making it. That's wrong. That's not even how the father operates. Because if you don't have a chance of making it, then why would anybody? What would be the point of anybody doing anything though? If they don't have a chance, and only 144,000 people going to make it, period. As some of these brothers be teaching and talking about. Then why would the, why would anybody else do anything righteous? They might as well just forget it because they don't got a chance no way. And that's not true. Those are going to be the elect. But those are not the only people that can be saved. So you can't lose heart. Repent your sins. Everybody, repent your sins. Call on the name of Yahweh. Call on the name of the Most High Yah. Don't think because you're not in a group, this group, this group don't decide if you get to the kingdom. This group don't decide your fate. This church don't decide your fate. Only the Most High Yah, only Yahweh, only Yahuwah decides your fate, not no man. You must remember that. I want to ask the question. It's a question that I had posed because after I read the parable of the lost son, after I read the parable of the lost sheep, 
and meditated on it. Some came into my spirit and I couldn't quite remember what I was thinking or what was put on me to ask this question. So the question is, if you were blessed and fortunate enough to get to heaven and you saw someone you didn't think would make it or someone you didn't think would be there, would you rejoice that both of you made it? Or would you think to yourself, why is that person here? And that's just something to think about. I'm not going to even really talk about it much. I'm just going to give scripture to show what we should be thinking. Because if you're fortunate enough to be in the kingdom, and anybody else is fortunate enough to be in the kingdom, they earned, I don't even want to say that. I don't say that. I take that back. They didn't earn their way in. The Most High's mercy and his favor and whatever they did that had favor in the Most High Yah's eyes got them in. So if they in, then they supposed to be there. And that's all I say. And that's backed up by scripture. Because you can't buy your way into heaven. You can't cheat your way into heaven. You can't fool your way into heaven. You can't cry your way into heaven. None, none of that. When asked... And it's talking about the love of our brothers and sisters. When Hamashiach, when they told him, your brothers and sisters and your mother is here to see you. This was Yahawashai's response. Uh, Mark the third chapter, 31st verse. Then Yahweh's mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mothers and brother, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. He said, Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does Yahweh's will is my brother and sister and mother. So our brothers and sisters, mothers, cousins in the world, friends, people you know and don't know, if they don't believe in the Most High Yah, if they don't have the Most High in them, that's not your brothers, your sisters, your friends. Your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your mother, your father. Those are the people that love and follow you out. Even Yahawashai said that. And it wasn't to disrespect his mother's and brother and his sister. He was just saying... All these people are my family. That's what he was saying. All these people are my family. Matthew 11 and 32. This is more scripture to back that up. Whoever acknowledged me before men... I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. This is Jehoshai talking. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on earth. 
I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. And why is that? That's because anybody who is going against the Most High Yah's will, anybody who is of the world, if you are of Yah, they're going to turn against you. It don't matter if it's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your friend. Furthermore, Matthew 11 and 37, anyone who loves his father or mother more than me, more than Yahweh is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. 39, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So when you find your life, your real life, through Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, when you follow, when you find your real life, through the Most High Yah, you're going to lose your other life. You're going to lose your life. You're going to lose the worldly life. But if you lose your life for the Father's sake, you will find your life because you will get the afterlife. You will get the kingdom of heaven. It sounds simple, but it's extremely hard. But we must remember that. It's not about doing well in this life, in the physical. Because to do well is to be comfortable. The people who do well are the people who got all the food, got all the clothes, got all the luxuries. They obey in the flesh. They don't want for nothing. They don't need for nothing. But in your not needing for nothing, they don't come to the Most High Yah. They don't call on the Father. Because when we have infirmities, when we have trials, when we have pain, when we have suffering, we come to the Father. That's when you when you draw closer. That's when you draw closer to Yahweh. That's when you draw closer to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai said, Rest your burdens on me. For I am meek and lowly at heart. And I, you will find rest for your soul. We can't deal with this alone. We can't deal with this through people. If a person helps you and they help you righteously, that still came from the Most High Yah. Even if somebody, sometimes somebody who don't even know the Father, who might be in wickedness, still might help you. Just like Pharaoh helped Joseph. Just like, um, who else did something like that? Um, uh, the king of Persia, uh, Cyrus. Just how he came, he let the Most High put it on his heart to let our people go back to the land and rebuild the temple start rebuilding the temple. Sometimes people who don't necessarily love the Most High, follow the Most High, 
The most high controls all. He could still make them have favor for you. He could still make them bow to your feet, give you a good position at that job. You may need something and don't know where it's going to come from. The most high can make it come from somebody from your enemy. He can make it come from your friend or however he wanted to come. But you can't choose nobody but for the far. Now we're going to go to Matthew 19. To whom much is given, much is expected. And remember, our ancestors told us these things. Our grandmothers, our grandfathers, great-grandmothers, great-grandfathers. These sayings don't be coming out of nowhere. A lot of times people use them in the world. But if you want something good, you got to go through a lot to get it. Nothing good comes easy, especially not the king. And we have to constantly remind ourselves of this stuff. We have to constantly study the scriptures. We have to constantly pray. We have to constantly look around and see and have compassion on other people or love, not envy, not jealousy, compassion and love for our brothers and sisters because the minute that you're thinking, woe is me and all this stuff I'm going through, you hear somebody else's story and you be like, dang, I don't feel good, but man, I ain't going through that. They going through a lot more than I'm going through. Or they going through something too. Let me pray for them. Let me not just make it about myself. I'm not the only one in the world. Matthew 19 and 16. This is about the rich young man. Now a man came up to Yahweh and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me what is, about what is good? Yahweh Shai replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commands. Which ones, the man inquired. Yahweh Shai replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor is another Israelite. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Yahweh Shai answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Let's let's sit and think about that for a second. Because how many of us would do that? How many of us have that? Have done that? Do you see when brothers and sisters are making these videos and lecturing people and telling people what should be and what shouldn't be? Do you see them doing things? That rabbi, that the teacher, the son of man, the Messiah, do you see them doing things that he says? Have I done that yet? Have I sold all my possessions? No. Do I need to? Yeah. I don't got much, so it shouldn't be hard for me. But would you be willing to do that? 
and go follow the Messiah. Would you sell your clothes and only keep the bare necessities? Would you sell your car? Would you sell your house? Or would you give and say, well, I'm going to let somebody stay with me who in need, no charge, a family, a stranger, who the Ruach, the father puts on me. This brother, this sister need help. This family need help. These are the questions that we should be asking ourselves and the things that we should be doing. Because if you give up everything in the world, then greater is going to be your treasure in heaven. This is what the Father says. This is what the Messiah says. So it's not no lie. The Father can't lie. He's not a man. He can't lie. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Yahawashai said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. We've heard this verse, but people don't take it serious. How is a camel going to go through the eye of a needle? It really ain't possible. Only through the Father is all things possible. But through man, a camel can't get through the eye of a needle. An eye of a needle ain't much or nothing getting through that, but a little piece of thread. Because it's saying, your, wherever your heart is, is where your treasure is. Excuse me. So if your heart is on money, if you live your life about money, getting money, you're not worried about no, you're not worried about doing good things. You're not worried about the father. I'll be, yeah, you're not worried about it because your worry is on money and money is of the world. Wealth is of the world. Because your mind is always going to be, oh, I got this. Oh, this is so, so beautiful. Oh, I want this. Oh, I got to do this to get some more money. Oh, I got to go to this business meeting. Oh, I got to cut this person out. Oh, I got to go collect this. It's always going to be money based. Yeah, every blue moon, they may do some kind for somebody, but ultimately, your heart's desire is going to be what you chase and what you go after on a regular basis. You can't have your man in the flesh. We can't have our man on all these other things. We don't have the capacity. We're too sinful. We're too wicked by nature. We're not strong enough to have all these things. You're not going to have access to all these men for a woman. You're not going to have access to all these women, women for a man. All this money, drugs, this, that, all these materialistic things, and then be able to not sin. You're not going to have people calling your name, throwing themselves on your feet, telling you you can do whatever to them. You can have this. You can go buy anything you want and not have a sinful nature in mind. It's not, it's not going to happen. Anybody who telling you that, they're lying. Anybody who, any concept that you have in your mind that all these rich people and these celebrities, they so far from the most high God, they ain't, they not thinking about no father. Even when they say, oh God and all this, they talking about whatever wicked gods they praise, like by all and all that, the Baphomet and all, they ain't talking about, they talking about Satan. They're not talking about the Most High, y'all. Stop being foolish. You shouldn't even be following. We should not be following no celebrities because the second name for a celebrity is a, called an idol. 
We should not be deep into sports. You should not be hollering and screaming, ready to fight, ready to argue about no sport. That's idolatry. It don't matter who do it. You shouldn't be painting your body. You putting on the outfits. You going to the, okay. <clears throat> they said that at one of the recent football games, this is this is how deep that idolatry go, that idol worship. These football teams, these celebrities, those be their gods. So at one of the Kansas City games, it was very cold outside, like negative four degrees. And a bunch of people was in the stands, mostly <clears throat> Caucasians. I'm sure, but they said a bunch of them, maybe not, I don't know how many, I think about 12 or 16 uh, had to get limbs amputated. So they they worship and they was that deep into it that they were willing to risk their life to go out there and watch and do that idol worship. So now they missing fingers, they missing limbs because of that. when they could have just watched it at home. But it'd be deep. People shooting and fighting each other over who team is better, over after the games, before the games. And this stuff goes all the way back to Roman and Greek times. They did the same things. They had the games. They had all the uh, revelry and foolishness and the killing and chaos over, ooh, I like this, this group, this team, this soldier. And that's the whole point of it. To get your mind and focus into wickedness. To get your mind and focus off the most high. To have the people get their minds focused off their problems of being poor and things like that and be looking at basically some 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 foolishness it's not to say that you going outside in the backyard throwing a football around with your son is bad there's nothing wrong with that we talking about getting deep into these things idol worship it's nothing wrong with eating food but if all you sitting up thinking about, ooh, what I'm going to eat next, and ooh, I want to go to this restaurant, and ooh, this and this, that, food is your idol. Food is your God. It's nothing wrong with having a car. But if you outside all day, and I've I seen people do it, and you wash your car every day. Some people, they washing their car two, three times a day. Telling people, don't touch my car. Man, don't get in my car with that. Wipe your feet off. How you gonna wipe your feet off? I gotta walk on the ground. I don't want no mud in my car. Don't do that. Man, it's my baby right here. I love her. Idol worship. We cannot, we're not supposed to do those things. Just think about this concept. And it, how we how we constantly, how our people especially our people, because we are the most highest treasured possession. So I don't never try to take the focus off of us and what we supposed to do and be talking about all these other people. Because if we do what we supposed to do, if we did what we supposed to do, we would not be in this mess. If we do what we supposed to do, we're going to get out of this mess. The most high say he going to write his name in our minds and on our hearts. So we'll never forget it. We ain't going to be able to go into them wicked ways anymore. But that's in the future. There will be war no more. Other nations are going to bow down to us. We're going to be back in our land. This is what the Most High says. But it's yet to come. But if we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to be fine. So we have to keep the focus on us and what we supposed to be doing. Yourself as an individual, first and foremost. 
your nation, those who you can influence. And if you influence in some that's outside of your nation, Gentiles, that's fine. If they willing to submit to the father, if they willing to call on us and know that we are the Israelites, we are the most highest chosen people in treasure possession. And they, they willing to get in line. That's fine. But serving the father, doing righteousness, repenting, loving, that's supposed to be your main concern first and foremost. We got to let go of that idol worship. And we don't be realizing all those things are idol worship. Back to my point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. How do you think the Father feel that we are screaming at the top of our lungs for a football game? for a basketball game, but we won't scream at the top of our lungs and joy for him. How do you think that make him feel? That's nothing. That's a game. That's fictitious. That don't change your life. Soon as that game go off, it's over. Nothing happens. You still live the same life. How do you think he feel that you spend all that time on your phone, but you don't spend none of that time researching and learning about the Father or those who do this. How you think he feel and you talking about ooh and hollering and screaming about some celebrity and you ain't hollering and screaming about him? You should not even put anybody nowhere near him. But people don't even do that for him. That's just utter disrespect. So then you can see why we in these situations that we in. And everybody want to get to the kingdom, but don't nobody want to put in the work. How you going to get to the kingdom? It, you think you're going to bypass who made the kingdom? Who sits on the throne in the kingdom? You're not going to bow to the king, but you're going to get to the kingdom. It's not going to work. All heads and knees shall bow to Almighty Yah, Almighty Yahweh. We got to start taking it more serious, everybody. And if you doing it, keep doing it and do better. We supposed to be coming to the Father trying to figure out, Father, what can I do more? What can I do better? What can I do to help someone else? What can I, what can I give up? What can I give up for you? We just read it. He told the man, give up your possessions and come follow me. Yahweh shot. Hamashiach. He went away sad because he couldn't accept it in his heart. Like, man, I did. I followed the uh, commandments, but give away everything I got. Ooh, that's tough because I got a lot of stuff. and. He was loving the things. And it ain't about judging anybody because you got to think about what would you do? What you doing to get closer to the king? Because watching videos ain't going to get it. If a video helps you and you following along with teaching and somebody really resonate in your heart like this brother ain't really asking for nothing. If you give something, you give or this sister. But... This person is humble. This person is coming with love. This person not saying, I'm already know I'm chosen. Me and my group, me and my family, me and my people, you know, it's starting with us. It's starting with you. Okay. If you a prophet, what prophet, read your word, what prophet was boastful? What prophet said, it start with me and it's through me and my group and then it's going to trickle its way down to everybody else. 
only the truth was given to me. It was it was it was various prophets. It wasn't just one. So a lot of people that's on them though. That's on them. As far as how they teaching and stuff. That's why I don't call no names. I don't spend too much time on it. Because we gonna all be judged for what we do and not do. We gonna all be judged for what we do and not do. Matthew 7, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother eye, brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take out the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? A plank is much bigger than a speck. And when you point the finger at somebody else, that thumb point back at you. You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. We cannot be judging. We have to be compassionate and we have to try to help our brothers and our sisters. The Father is sending us help. We just got to be patient. We supposed to be working towards the kingdom. So... I guess a good analogy would be, or a parable would be, I'll just say an analogy would be, you working, you working towards a race. You working out. You getting your mind right. The competition is not here yet. The race, the final race is not here yet. You, you working towards that. But every day you have to train and keep building up or a fight, a boxing match. You have to go into training like a boxer would go into training. They go into a camp, training camp. They got to eat right. They got to work out. They got to spar. They got to practice. The actual match ain't happening, but they got to keep doing it. Because if they slack off, when the match comes, they not going to be ready and they going to get knocked out. You're not going to reach the championship. You're not going to reach the kingdom if you're not right in your spirit, if you're not walking the narrow path. Do the best you can. You don't want to fall off because the father said if a righteous man starts doing wickedness, and he turned away from his righteousness, then the righteous things that he did won't be remembered. But also, if a wicked man stops doing wickedness and turns to righteousness, then he can be saved. So you can't just say, oh, well, I did, I did righteousness, I did good things in my 20s. But in my 30s, you know, I fell off and I stopped, but I should be good for what I did in the past. That's not what the father say. You turned away from your righteousness. We're going to Matthew 24, 24th chapter 36 through 51. This our last one. Matthew 20, 24, 36 through 
No one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. So Hamashiach don't even know. Only Yahweh. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So when Yahweh Shai come back, it's going to be similar, the same, just like how people was in Noah's days. They weren't paying attention. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be <clears throat> at the coming of the Son of Man. It's not that they weren't warned. They had plenty of warnings. <clears throat> Excuse me. But saying they knew nothing about it, meaning they didn't care. They had eyes, but they couldn't see. They had ears, but they couldn't hear. Just like many of the things that's going on now. There are brothers and sisters even if people are not doing everything they supposed to do, because we all sin, even if you don't know exactly the spirit, because we worship in spirit and truth, you should be feeling the spirit like, I need to get right with the Most High Yah. I need to learn who I am. I need to get into my word. I need to repent my sins. I need to start treating people right. I need to look around and see what's going on in the world, not to be dismayed by it, but to see like, wait, Babylon about to fall. The money going down, the money ain't worth nothing. You got people coming to the country fighting, you know, uh, from all over, the, all over the world, pouring into the country and they're letting them in. It can't be nothing good going to come from that. Not for you. All these wars going on. All the things that's the attacks that Satan is doing on people, especially those who are trying to do right. He revving up his attacks. All these different things you should be seeing. Pay attention to the signs of the times. But just like in those days, people were partying, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other one left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other one left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day Yahweh will come. Yahweh Shai will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready. Be ready. Because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. Nobody knows. So anybody who's saying they know, they don't know. That's just, that's blasphemy. That's delusion. They might be guessing, but the Father ain't tell you to play. He don't play guessing games. Excuse me. And if the angels in heaven don't know, and Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the Messiah don't know. What make you, how you know? You don't know nothing. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth. He will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. 
The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you get to doing Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah is saying, the Father, the Son is saying, if you get to doing things you're not prepared and you get to doing things of the world, kicking it, partying, drinking, just doing whatever they do, doing drugs, sexual perversion, whatever, you're not looking for the Father, you're not prepared, then you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed with all those who are wicked. Be that in the world and be that in the afterlife. So we need to be preparing for the battle. We need to be preparing, excuse me, for the glory, for the kingdom. Because there are going to be some tough times to come. You have to prepare spiritually. Anybody that's saying the Father is going to tell us what to get or not get. The Father knows that some people don't have the ability to get certain things. And even if you don't make it because we all have to transition out the physical, you want to prepare for the spiritual. For the afterlife. It's not about how long can I last in the world, in the physical. It's not about take any drug, uh, do anything to, to, to spare your life in the physical. No, because that's what the mark of the beast and when all that comes along, that's what people are going to be doing to prolong their life in the physical. They're going to be getting microchipped. They're going to be getting things put in them. They're going to be willing to uh, accept the mark of the beast for food or accept Satan to get something to eat or to have a place to stay. You got to be willing to lose your life. And I know it sounds easy. It ain't easy, of course. But you got to be willing to lose your life. What did the scripture say? What did the scripture say? He who loses his life will find it. And he who loses his life for me shall gain. You shall gain eternal life if you lose your life for the Father, if you lose your life for Yahweh. Eleven and thirty nine. Matthew eleven thirty nine. 39, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Keep your eyes on the kingdom. Exalt, be happy, be joyful, be, be glad when somebody turns away from sin. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your imprint. Pray for those who do you wrong that they come out of wickedness, especially if it's amongst your nation. Because the heavens rejoice. The Most High don't want none of us to be destroyed. But if you don't do what you're supposed to do and you're doing wickedness, what choice do we have? It's consequences and repercussions to everything. I pray that we all make it to heaven because if we all make it to heaven and I got to really, really humbly start to exalt that prayer that all of Yasharala make it to pray to heaven and put that in my prayers. Because if you make it to heaven, that means that you, you turned away from sin. That means the father found favor in whatever, in what you were doing and how you was living. So I want as many of us as possible to be there through his glory, as many of us as possible to call on his name and do his ways.
I don't want it to just be me and a couple people I know. And that's what we should be praying for. I thank you. I love y'all. I'm praying for you whether I know you or don't know you. If you ever need prayer, ever need any help, anything that I could possibly do, please hit me up. Contact me through Instagram. Contact, contact me through email. I would love to pray with you brothers and sisters out there, anybody who needs any help, any prayer, any fellowship, studying, calling on the name of the Father together. Anything that two asked in my name shall be granted. Let's come together. Come together in your household. Come together with anybody who believe and honor the Father, anybody who's speaking in humility, righteousness, and love. Come together. I thank you. I love you. This is Brother J. Israel. Until next time, y'all willing, I'll be with you next time, and we can fellowship again. Thank you. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah.